All right, well, just getting ready to flatten these rings. Glue's dried up really good now. I'm gonna start out by just making marks all the way around them. And as I start sanding, once these marks are gone, I know I've sanded that whole side. And uh, that means that side should be flat. And this sander, I've had a lot of questions about this sander. I've got a video on how on how I built it. Uh, just make sure that you don't you don't get your hands in the front part here, because this thing's spinning this way, and it's trying to pull or push things this direction. You can come in from the back side all you want to. It just kicks your hand out if you accidentally contact it. It can't pull you in, but uh, I guess if you've got a lathe that reverses, though, you have to be careful there. But as you come in, as you bring a piece through, if you reach up under there to grab it, you can easily get your hand pulled in. Uh, two horse motor, it'll probably pull that thing in there pretty good. But anyway, I've got my marks on, on the faces, on these three faces. And uh, I'm just going to start sending them through. I'll alternate one, the next, the next. And then I'll raise it up a little bit. And I'll go through again, all three, until I get all three of these are sanded down. All right. I'll run it probably around 1100 RPM. <laughs> Around 1150, I get my dust going. got all, all three flat on one side so now we're going to remake marks we're going to remake marks on the opposite sides and once these are all gone then theoretically I should be flat on both sides Give it a shot.
Okay, I've got my rings good and flat. So uh, I'm ready to glue them up. But I'm going to do this a little different. Instead of instead of running them alternating like this, where uh, half where your lap your lap comes over half of the last layer, I'm going to layer mine this way. Now, arguably, it is not as strong a joint as the other direction. But I want to get this alternating color pattern here, and that's the only way to do that. So we'll see. If it comes flying apart in the lathe, then uh, I will have been wrong. <laughs> and I will learn my lesson the next time. But I'm just going to glue this real good. Use a lot of glue. I'm just going to smear it around real good here. And most of this wood will end up being turned away anyhow. But I just want to make sure I've got plenty, plenty of glue on here for each layer. All right, so I'll go on my, this layer here, go right on there, and I'm just going to line everything up. Give it a good little twist around. Make sure all your lines all line up. Because if they don't line up, then you'll end up in trouble at the end. Because your pattern won't alternate and your lines won't line up and it'll just, it'll look terrible. All right. All my lines are lined up really, really good. Get a towel over here. I'm just going to set a weight on top. And that should that should hold it until until all is uh, good and dried up. All right. Well, I am going to get started back on uh, uh just trying to slip just a little so I'll come back and double check this real good. Make sure that none of this stuff is moved before it starts really setting up good. But I'm going to get my sander off the lathe, and then I'm going to start going to start hollowing the rest of this. All right, I'll be back in just a minute. All right, I'm just getting ready to start hollowing this out. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to turn on my dust collection right there, but uh, what I'm going to use is uh, it's a long bar, it's a 5 8 bar, it's 18 inches long, I've got a, a cobalt cutter on the on the end, and I've just, just sharpened it up really good, and uh, let's see how she cuts, this thing acts like a scraper, so you want to come in kind of at a, a negative angle just just very slight negative angle and uh, we'll see what we get right there let me get everything going
Tim, maybe that'll work. Maybe that'll work for you. Gonna continue on using this using this tip. Uh, I'm using it for all my roughing out, and I'll continue on. I'll pull from the bottom up the side until I get the wall thickness what I want. And what I'm looking for here is uh, about a quarter inch up here on the top, and maybe thinner down down through here. Uh, but we'll see. I just wanted a little bit thicker right here where all my glue my glue joint's gonna be. So I'm just gonna continue on doing that. Uh, I'm in uh, about, about two and a half, three inches right now. And I believe I've actually got like seven inches all together. Uh, yeah, got seven inches all together to get down to the bottom. So I've got a long way to go. But that's the way I'm going to do it. I'm just going to use this as a scraper. And I'm just going to pull in and up. If I try to go in with this small tip, if I try to start here with a small tip and go in, I'm, I end up uh, just kind of digging a hole inside there. So, uh, and it kind of catches it. It's hard to actually run it in, just run it in and out. But, uh, and then I'm going to go back to my other scraper, my bigger scraper which is uh this one right here right beside the camera maybe i can get it up there's this one and i'll use it to clean up the inside so anyway i'm going to continue on and i'll i'll bring you back uh, when i get a little bit further along
doing now is getting really close to the bottom and the wall thickness trying to get the wall thickness about a quarter all the way down and that's about where I'm at right now I'm about an inch from the bottom now and uh, I think I am anyway yeah I know I am yeah I'm about one inch from the bottom so I'm gonna continue on trying to trying to keep my wall thickness right I've got a hump right about there so uh but I'm just gonna continue on hollowing and uh, and I'll be back once I get ready to start making my clean cuts all right gotten to the bottom now and uh, my wall thickness now is just about a quarter of an inch so uh, so now I'm gonna start making cleaning cuts and get out some of this rough texture that's in there now and uh, and start getting ready to uh, uh, get get my segments glued on now what I'm gonna be using to do my cleanup cuts because well, I'm gonna pick it up here. I broke that off the uh, off my little key stock, so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to clean this all up and re-glue it back on there. I uh, hadn't really found a good way. That's about the third time I've thrown that off, but this uh, carbide cutter should do just fine. It's a 12 millimeter carbide cutter. And uh, it's big enough to make nice clean cuts all the way up through there. Let me turn it and make sure I've got a good sharp edge where I need it. And I'm going to use this to clean the walls, but also to bring my final thickness down. And I've been using my, uh, my calipers here, checking the wall thickness. And I, I'm almost about a quarter of an inch all the way down to about right here. When I get right there, I've left just a little bit extra in the bottom. It, I let it get on up. It's about a three quarter inch, about a half inch from the bottom. And uh, that'll just help me add a little bit of weight, uh, keep this thing from tipping over. Uh, nobody's ever really going to see that anyway, but but uh that's the way i'm gonna do that so i'm gonna i'm gonna very very carefully cut up through here several cuts and they'll be cleaning them up and i'm gonna leave it about a quarter here but i'm gonna thin all the inside down to probably around an eighth and uh and we'll just continue on going with this <laughs> check your depth or your thickness often because if you don't you'll end up what you'll end up with is uh, your inside diameter will become larger than your outside diameter and uh, you'll be uh, coming up with something else to do with this thing all right if right here it's about an eighth right there it gets a little bit thicker as I go and uh, so I need to work from here down 
and I'm not going to work any further than that up this way because I'll end up getting too thin. I don't want it too thin. I just want to make sure I remove most of the weight. Don't let your finger get up in it. Continue doing that until I get this down around an eighth or three thirty seconds. I'm getting really close now. All right, I'm going to continue on, and what this is going to do is this is just going to make this thing really lightweight in the hands. So, uh, but at the same time, you can see the texture is a lot better. The inside's a whole lot smoother now than it was with that uh, cobalt tool that I had because it's so small. <clears throat> okay, now I'm just going to flatten all this off right here. And I'll just, I'll try to do that just with a skew and uh, just flatten that across. just with my ruler I'm gonna lay it across here and make sure it's it's contacting on both sides over here and over here and that looks pretty dang good right there so make sure I've cut it all the way around just so I I know I don't have any uh, so I don't have any gaps in there all right well, my rings are still sitting over here, kind of gluing up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, upload this, uh, take this in, and start doing a little editing while uh, while that glue continues to set. And then, then we'll be back out here to move on. All right, now before I get too far along, <clears throat> most of the time when I do a vase like this, if I'm doing it in two and two or three or more parts, I will, I will basically glue them all together and I will turn the whole thing first. But since I had to do segmented rings and all, well, <clears throat> I really, I, I wasn't able to do that so what I've done is once I cut this with the bandsaw a while ago uh, you can see how the grain and all lines back up on that pretty good but I don't have a center mark here 
So, uh, the best way that I found to do that, this edge right here is very close to what uh, the diameters are very similar. So, I'm just going to match them back up best I can. And I'm going to bring in my tail stock here to make me a center, a center mark. And then that way, once I get my segment rings on there, there's my center mark right there. Once I get my segments on here, I can make sure that this is back centered just the way it's supposed to be. Uh, because if, if the segmented rings aren't centered, and then it's going to be harder to center this one. So, alright. And I did, uh, I took off my bandsaw marks on the uh, belt sander a minute ago. I just took it over and knocked off all the sanding marks. So, should be good to go. Okay, I'm just getting ready to start gluing up my my segment rings onto my vase. And the way I'm going to make sure there's no dust on it, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to I'm going to get it as centered as I can with my eyes and then I'll just I'll just double check with this to make sure I'll, I'll check on the four quadrants just to make sure that's a sixteenth that's a sixteenth okay just making sure and I've got a sixteenth around all the way around so, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to draw a circle because I know that's that center. And draw a circle all the way around. Okay, and then I'll put I'll put my glue on here. And I may even put a little bit on there also. Let me see. I'm just going to spread some glue around this rim. Okay. Well, sorry about that. Uh, my battery died just as I started gluing this up. But anyway, I drew the circle. I put my glue on here. And I matched the circle back up. And uh, basically, I let it sit for a few minutes to kind of set and uh, so it won't move while I put the rest of it together so now I'm going to add this piece to it <clears throat> and I marked these when I first started bottom and top so this is the top of the vase this points toward the bottom now I'm going to have to try to line all this grain up also so let me just get plenty of glue on here I think that that'll probably be enough. Let me put this up under my lathe. All right. And just get it all smeared around real good. And remember, this is in grain. That's what I was about to say a while ago when my battery died. This is in grain. You have to get plenty of plenty of glue in there. Because the end grain is going to soak it up. And that's why a lot of your end grain glue ups uh, end up failing. Because the glue all soaks into the end grain. Alright, so I'm looking at it right about here. Let me pull this up. Get, get this in my... Line the grain up. All right. Give me a little bit of pressure on the tail stock. Now this is uh this should be centered really well. I'm just going to get get really good pressure from the tail stock. Now I'll clean that off a little bit, clean off some of the excess.
and that'll just make it easier on my tools because that glue gets really hard so you want to get as much of it off as you can all right now I've got to work I've got to work tomorrow so this will have a good full at least 36 hours to cure up I'm just gonna leave it all sitting just like it is now and uh, I'll be back in the about a day and a half or so to work on this thing some more and get to hopefully get this thing finished up and uh, we shall see what we end up with I'm hoping it'll be nice I think it will be all right well I'll see you then